Today I've got a problem from TBO's Problem Solving Booklet, a booklet that's full of questions for students looking to prepare for their Oxford and Cambridge mathematics interviews. I've got a really cool problem here, which I'm going to solve in two different ways. Uh, we have a, an, an, inf an infinite chessboard, um, the squares of which have been filled with positive integers. So you can see I've got this very nice grid paper here. So we could have something like this, whatever. But it has the property that each of these integers is the arithmetic mean of its four neighbors. So, for example, if this is eight here, it's the arithmetic mean of its four neighbors. So the four neighbors here would have to add up to 32. So this would then have to be 25 in order to make eight the arithmetic mean. And then I could go here and go, OK, well, four is eight plus seven plus three. Well, that would have to be minus two. So this is already broken. Um, Anyway, that's kind of the idea here. We're going to fill these up with integers like so, uh, positive integers to be specific. And we want to show that all integers must be equal to each other. So as I say, I'm going to be solving this in two different ways. Uh, let's just dive in with the first solution. Again, in an interview, you probably wouldn't know the solution straight away. You'd probably play around with this and try and draw a grid, paper, uh, you know, a grid. And in fact, you're going to get a similar issue to what I just had, where if you kind of draw some numbers, you kind of get an issue with the smaller numbers. And this is kind of key that the positive integers are bounded below by a number that's in the set one. OK, how do we reach a contradiction here? What we're going to do is uh, suppose for contradiction that, the, that not all the integers are the same. And we're going to let s be the smallest integer on the chessboard. On the chessboard. So now S has got to appear somewhere at least once. Let's say S is there. Now, by this argument, because S is here, well, then now all four of its neighbors have to be S. Why is that? Well, if any of them are not equal to S, let's say this guy, let's say this called S plus three, for example. In particular, that's bigger than S. But in order then for these four to average out to be S, we must have then one element that is less than S in these three. Maybe this guy is S minus five. But that's a contradiction because S is supposed to be the smallest integer on the board. So the only way we can do this is by having all of the neighbors of S being S in order to avoid a contradiction. But then we can just rinse and repeat this argument. If I look at this S now, again, using the exact same argument, all of its neighbors have to be S. And similarly, look at that S, all of its neighbors have to be S. If I look at that S, all of its neighbors has to be S. If I look at that S, all of its neighbors has to be S. And so on, I can keep this going forever and ever and ever and fill up my ch chessboard to just have S's in. So that's the first proof of how you arrive that all the numbers must be the same. How else can we prove this? Well, we can use um, a similar argument to say, well, okay, if we have a number that is not necessarily small, if we just start from a number, let's call it x. Now, there's two possibilities. Either all of the neighbors here are x, or they're not, and you have one that's different. But if you have one that's different, then you can guaranteed, you, you know, you're guaranteed to be able to jump to a neighbor that's smaller than x. So let's say it's this guy, and this guy here is, I don't know, x minus 2. So now you've started from x and you've jumped to a square which is smaller than x. OK, and now you can rinse and repeat the same argument. In fact, now you're guaranteed to get a square next to x minus 2 that's smaller than x, uh, that's smaller than x minus 2. Why is that? Because you know these four squares here average out to x minus 2, but we have a square that's already bigger than x minus 2. And so therefore, one of the neighbors has to be smaller than x minus 2. And in which case you get that guy there, let's say, and let's say that I don't know, that's x minus three. And again, you can repeat the argument. There's got to be a neighbor of x minus three. Let's say this guy that's smaller than x minus three. But then you get a sequence of decreasing numbers. So you started from x and you're getting a sequence of decreasing numbers. But eventually you're going to have to hit one or hit, you know, break this sequence because you're going de you're decreasing from a positive integer eventually because each of these terms in the sequence is a positive integer after at most x terms you're going to have hit zero or the negative numbers which is a contradiction and hence again it's not possible so all these terms on the chessboard must be the same um, i'm interested to know if there are any other solutions i'm sure there are or other interesting problems 
Um, I encourage you to ask yourself, what happens if you replace positive integers with just integers? What happens to the problem then? Have a go. Uh, if you are preparing for your Oxford or Cambridge interviews, best of luck. Some of my students have their interviews on Monday. So best of luck if you are one of those people who has their interview on Monday. And if yours is a little bit later, you have a little bit more time. But still, best of luck regardless. Thanks so much for watching. I'll catch you in the next one. Have a great day.